What's up, everybody? I'm here with uh, my power metal collection. That's all I got uh, right here. That's as you can see, it's right here, and we're nearing the end of metal. From here on till right there is metal. So we only got a couple videos left of this at least, and uh, then that's all I got for metal. Oh, and then I got right here, which is my uh, odd shapes. So they, yeah. Um, so yeah, power metal right here. My first one isn't even a power metal album, but it's a band that I associate with power metal. It's uh, Battalions of Fear by Blind Guardian. Do I need to explain? It's a speed metal album, but it's killer. Blind Guardian was making great speed metal before they were making great power metal. Um, this is 1987, I believe, or 1988. Yeah, 87. Fall of the Blind was 88. Um, yeah, look at that. This is speed metal. Look at those dudes. That is 1987. They debuted at the same time as Death, which is very cool, but, uh... Honestly, I think I've listened to this more times than I've listened to Scream Bloody Gore, so... Yeah, this is a killer album. If you like speed metal, you like that old school, you know, like... Kill them all without the, with less grittiness and more musicness, rather than being brutes. Yeah, that's uh, Battalions of Fear by Blind Guardian. It's a great album. Next is my favorite Blind Guardian album. It is not Nightfall on Middle Earth. This is somewhere far beyond. I love the album art. Look at that cover. That is a cool album cover. Um, yeah, this is just one of the best albums I've ever heard as far as regular metal and uh, power metal goes. Like old school heavy metal and power metal goes. It's got traces of that, you know, that speed metal in it because this is only their second album being a power metal band. Got a little uh, order sheet. There's the boys. I forgot the name of the singer, but he's a killer singer. I like, he's got like a mid range voice, and that's what I like so much about Blind Guardian. So that's it for that one. Blind Guardian. That's it for my Blind Guardian collection, I believe, yeah, which is lame. Next is a band that all you power metal elitists are gonna get a freaking. Some kind of you guys are gonna freak out. That's what I'm saying. Inhuman Rampage by Dragon Force. It doesn't fit anywhere else. Like some people are gonna say it's speed metal or it's just junk or whatever. It doesn't bother me. I kind of enjoy it. Not gonna lie to you. I mean, the opening track is through the fire and the flames, and I used to really like the song "The Flame of Youth" and "Cry for Eternity." This is, you know, Dragon Force. This is like the first power metal that I ever really heard not knowing it was power metal I just thought it was ridiculous because Dragon Force I was in a Guitar Hero <laughs> but like the first ever power metal album I ever heard is coming up pretty soon and I'll say it when it is next is Symbonic Power Metal from France, France female fronted uh, of Wars in Asseria by Fairyland really swaggy names for stuff but uh, I love it Symphonic power metal is so cool to me. Um, yeah, this is super epic. Very Rhapsody of Fire-esque. Kind of meets Nightwish. Very cool. And not just saying meets Nightwish because of the uh, female front. It just it has that dark sound to it. I'm pretty sure... No, don't quote me on Nightwish. I don't know enough about Nightwish to be able to talk. I don't even own any. I tried to buy some. The dude at the record store was like, Well, can I, uh, can I use this for a minute? Uh, and I'll give it back to you when, uh, you're done. When I'm done. And then, he like, he put it in a box, and I haven't seen it since, so whatever. Yeah, fairy line. Great. If you like Rhapsody of Fire. Next is probably the blueprint for Power Metal. This is Keeper of the Seventh Key Part 1 by Halloween. Must I explain? This is a great album. I mean, who doesn't like this album? And that's a Power Metal fan. It's literally Iron Maiden on steroids. I've heard multiple people say that, and I came to that conclusion before I even heard somebody say that. It literally sounds like Number of the Beast got a shot of adrenaline. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's a great album. Check out Halloween if you have not. Now, right here is the first album I ever heard of that was considered power metal. This is my favorite Halloween album, Keeper of the Seventh Key Part 2. Awesome album. Um... It's a super killer album. Oh man, I can't get over this one. This is one of my favorite power metal albums. Even though Blind Guardian 
is probably superior to them to me in the German area. They didn't start off as power metal, so yeah, that's besides the point. This is a great one, little used, but uh, great album nonetheless. <whistles> Eagles Fly Free, probably my favorite song in here. Oh, we're listening to Goat Horn, I think is the name by Nocturnal. Yeah, Goat Horns by Nocturnal Mortem. Um, great band. Don't care that they're NS. No, they were NS at, they, at this uh, point in their career, but I don't care. <sighs> Drop my cat. Yeah, uh, got another one that's um, a bit controversial as far as power metal goes. It's very speed metal esque, early 80s. Actually, 88. This is uh, a Distant Thunder by Hellstar. I know most people could say this it's speed metal or heavy metal, but it's obviously extremely power metal if you've ever listened to this. This is an awesome album. I cannot get over this album. I love it so much. Like, anytime I'm in a speed metal mood, I throw this one on. I throw Battalions of Fear on and uh, some other stuff that I got here just lying around. And I got Lost Society and stuff like that, some early Megadeth. Just every time I hit, hit in a speed metal mood, this hits the spot. Check out the song The King is Dead, which is the opening track. And then the song Winds of War and Tyrannicide. Mm, so good. Not even funny. Hellstar kills it. Next, I can't believe I got this CD for $8. This is uh, a symphonic power metal staple. This is uh, King of the Nordic Twilight by Luca Torelli from Rhapsody. Uh, first solo record in 1988. I worship Luca Torelli's songwriting and everything that he's ever had his hand in. So if that gives you a hint as to what's going to be coming up here in a minute, be ready. This is such a good album. I almost ordered a Japanese press for $27 because it was on Discogs. And that was the cheapest that was there when I was getting antsy to listen to it. And... Uh, I officially own this and I'm so happy about it. This is so epic. It's so bombastic. Imagine the atmosphere of like summoning with bar metal. Luca Torelli kills. Next. I don't like this band really very much at all. I have a shirt of it, the this band, but I'm, I don't really wear it because I don't want to. I don't want to get poser checked or anything because I don't really like them. This is Rage for Order by Queensryche. It's alright. It's prog power metal, I guess, and it's just, ugh. I don't know. I just don't feel, feel good listening to it. Same thing with this one. This is the shirt I have, Empire. Boy, Queensryche. I just, I don't know why. I just don't dig Queensryche. Next, what I was warning you all about a second ago. I have their whole discography when they were Rhapsody, besides the singles, and one EP. I have everything. So this is Legendary Tales by Rhapsody. This is my favorite power metal band. If you can't tell, Rhapsody is my favorite, then like Blind Guardian, and then after that I don't even pay attention to who would be my favorite. Because it's, it's most of my listening with power metal. So this is their first album. Uh, their demo music was turned into this. Their first demo. I don't have that either. So I guess I'm missing two things in the regular Rap City catalog. <laughs> Love the album art as usual. Super bombastic, super epic as always. Next, Symphony of Enchanted Lands Part One, but it was just called. Enchanted Lines back then, not part one. Um, another killer album. This has, what is that, Emerald Sword on it? Everybody, if you've ever seen Rhapsody Live, I have not, but every show that I've watched, everybody's always wanting to hear Emerald Sword. And they have a music video for it, and it's awesome. More crazy, awesome album covers. Killer. Can't even explain how happy I am to own as much Rhapsody as I do. Next is... One I haven't gotten to listen to yet, but it's Dawn of Victory by Rhapsody. This is their third record. Uh, they, I like they call their genre Hollywood metal. Because <laughs> they're so bombastic and ridiculous, and I, I love that. My dog's yapping outside. It's super windy here. Uh, got an order shirt, which I would spend all of my money on. 
Dude, you could get a King of the Nordic Twilight long sleeve and then a Luca Torelli logo hat. Oh yeah, I'd buy all of it, every single one of them. <laughs> there they are, looking goofy as usual. Yeah, these each album is like a concept, and so when I listen to it, I need to put away some time for it. Next is the first Rhapsody of Fire album, or Rhapsody album that I bought. This is Reign of a Thousand Flames. Uh, I saw the name, looked it up when I was at the gym in the morning, I think the next day, and then got so psyched on this band, it's not even funny, and then I went and bought this. Look at the album cover. More cool, cool artwork, as always. Um, yeah, I literally didn't change this for three days, and I drive 45 minutes to school one way, and then I also drive, that's one way, so they're back like an hour and a half next day, they're back another hour and a half, also going to places to and from in between school, you know, going to band practice, which is another 40 minute drive because we practiced out in the country for that time. But yeah, this is great. I never took this out and I just jammed the living hell out of it. Next is Power of the Dragon Flame by Rhapsody. Mm. I love this. Even if you don't like Rhapsody, you gotta appreciate how cool these album covers are. Like seriously, these are so great. Power of the Dragon Flame's on here. They made a music video for that song and it is a great music video. Look at that long sleeve, I want one. Oh my God. Next, Live in Canada, The Dark Secret, Rhapsody. Also comes with a DVD of their live show and if you've ever watched them, they put on a great live show. Very bombastic, very fun, it would be awesome. I had the same reaction watching that as I did my first experience watching an Insafira music video because I thought it was kind of funny. So yeah. That, and my favorite straightforward Rhapsody album, Symphony of Enchanted Alliance Part 2, uh, The Dark Secret. This is the first one that I ever heard tracks off of, and I heard <whistles> Elgard's Green Valleys, and I it's got like the walking through water and then the people talking and then it starts the song, and I thought that was so cool, I had to pick it up. And I saw this in a pile, and this is all from one shop, I actually told them, put them all in a pile for me. And I will purchase all of them. I did. And here they are. Greatest album in Rhapsody's catalog. Next is when they changed their name to Rhapsody of Fire. This is Triumph of Agony. This is the last one that I have. So if you stuck through that even though you don't like them, thank you. Actually, I actually haven't listened to it yet. So I can't yammer on about it. But it's very cool. Next is uh, Heroes by Sabaton. It's uh, one of the most fun albums I've ever heard. This band's discography is killer. Everything they've done. I'm a big Sabaton fan. Look how goofy that is. Look at that extendo reach. Okay. Handful of Rain by Sabotage. Terrible Sabotage album. Good album, terrible Sabotage album, you know. I mean, they have Hall of the Mountain Key and their discography. I'm starting to lose my time so yeah next is uh Stradivarius with the album Infinite melodic I think they're Swedish no they're from Finland melodic dolphin on the cover listen the hell out of this too because I bought it the same time as that Rhapsody album very good melodic power metal album next is a Greek uh, epic power metal Wrath for the Ages by War Dance I got this from CDN Records and it was two dollars and I was all over it great bombastic album sounds very similar to Stradivarius but more epic so if you like that check out War Dance. and last one is the, the guitar player from Sabaton's band this is Valley of the Lost by Winterlong Winterlong is more on the uh, heavy metal side of power metal but it's definitely still power metal and I like that a lot it's very speedy very fast it's got that old school feel but you could definitely feel the Viking influence and the uh, the sound that would be in Sabaton so that's winter long. And that's it for my power metal, guys. I got thrash metal next, then heavy metal, then shit metal, aka glam and new metal. So that's it. Keep it greasy. Check you later.